All right, so before we get going again, a little housekeeping. So I did a little research on, I guess, just to see the path to get to the true ending for this game. And the chapter in now, we are already locked into an ending because it's it's a little different than the first game. It's not just like a straightforward path and they'll branch off into different endings. It's like it branches off pretty much at the near the beginning, actually, and then splits off into all the endings. So we'll finish up this ending, go back, do the prerequisites ending to get the true ending, which will be which have a bunch of different stuff because it'll be on the different path that we didn't or we didn't choose. And then once we do that, we'll go back and then do the true ending, which will be quicker like the third time through because we'll be able to skip a bunch of stuff. But but yeah, that's our plan, and that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> I couldn't help but laugh. Conversation like th conversations like this brought back so many memories. I used to be so full of myself that I take off Kirisu all the time. Just leave all your memories. いつかはバレるぞ。あんたはいいから<笑><笑> God。というわけで、あとはお二人でごゆっくりどうぞ。別にそんなつもりで言ったんじゃないわよ。それもこれも高壁が変なことを言い出したせいね。そうなのか。クリゴハンとカメハメハ。That's a noise. <laughs> Just like the real Kirisu, she was strangely so obsessed with hiding the fact that she was an at channeler. Kirisu disappeared from the screen. Kirisu had been, had been kind of rude lately, so it felt good to have a chance to get back at her. If I overdid it, she was probably going to hold a grudge, so this was likely a good place to stop. <laughs> If I explained it, she'd probably get mad and refuse to talk to me again. <笑>それで今回はどれぐらいの間こっちに滞在することになりそうなんだ。前よりも長くなるかもしれないわね。レスキネン教授が研究している新型農園は未だに詳しいことがほとんど分かっていないようだから、もしかしたら私だけ先に
Suzuha could see the other customers looking at them and whispering. The couple really stood out, after all. The man was a giant who looked like he ate major curry all the time, but the woman was slim, pretty, and looked very kind. The combination of huge man and slim woman was as unbalanced as the combination of pretty girl and major curry. The major cur curry was big. It was huge. Suzuha knew from experience. The massive silver trays were loaded with rice, rice and curry, and topped with two fried cutlets, fried shrimp, sausage, and boiled egg, and a mountain of cabbage. That's a lot of food. There was two or three times as, as much curry as you'd find in a normal dish, and the toppings were just as big. Even a growing young boy would find it hard to eat all. <sighs> Suzuha was irritated. <laughs> the Beauty and the Beast couple that Suzuha was watching, of course, was Itaro and Yuki. In the morning, they'd gone to see a movie in Yurokucho, then they'd come to Akihabara and gone straight to Gogo Kuri. Suzuha had followed them the whole time. That's why she couldn't believe Itaro's choice of date spots. <laughs> She clutched her spoon tight and gritted her teeth. Suzuha knew next to nothing about Japanese youth culture in 2011, and she even, and even she knew it was a bad idea. Who knew what was going through Yuki's mind, or so Suzuha thought. But. Surprisingly, Yuki was ignoring the people around her and innocently enjoying the huge curry. Suzu had evidently worried about nothing, but still she realized that Itaro was acting strangely. Ever since he'd come out of the movie theater, he was walking and talking strangely. Instead of his usual hunched posture, he was forcing himself to stand up straight. His every movement seemed oddly forced, as if he were a broken robot. And he downed glass after glass of water. Itaro poured water into Yuki's cup. Suzu had a bit bad feeling. And she was right. Itaro was moving so awkwardly that he almost spilled water on her hand. Yuki quickly wiped down the table with her handkerchief and grabbed her fork and spoon. There were stars in her eyes. Yuki seemed to be really enjoying her meal, but Itaro was very formal and quiet. He was taking little nibbles out of a piece of fried cutlet, like a squirrel eating a nut. The whole time, they weren't saying a word. <laughs> she decided to send him a message online, telling him to get his act together, and she and she just taken out her phone when... A huge plate was laid on the table in front of her. The other customers started murmuring again. Come to think of it, when she'd followed them into the st into the store, she'd ordered her usual major curry with extra roe, and then forget it, and then forgotten about it. Now everybody was going to focus on her. In a small shop like this, it was suicide. <laughs> Just as she expected, her eyes met Yuki's. <laughs> She realized that she probably she should probably leave, but she couldn't go without at least taking a bite of the major curry in front of her. 
Her experiences in the ward left her completely unable to waste food. She felt Yuki and Hitaro staring at her as she reluctantly picked up her spoon. Her only choice was to finish her extra large curry as soon as possible. She couldn't let herself be in the way. But instead, Yuki came over and picked up Suzuha's plate. Before Suzuha could respond, Yuki had moved her plate over to their table. She had no choice but to follow, but before she sat down, she whispered in Yuki's ear. Taro didn't react at all, even though she was sure he'd overheard that. God. I feel like this is the opposite, though. For some reason, Yuki seemed incredibly enthused. Suzuha was overwhelmed by her energy. But even when she turned to Itaro for help, he just awkwardly sat there, eating his curry like a robot. He awkwardly turned his head to face her. The rest of him stayed completely still. This is a glance back at Yuki. And for the first time, Yuki looked concerned. At the end, Yuki and Suzuha did have their curry eating contest, and surprisingly, both of them completely finished their meals. Suzuha won by a very slim margin, but the battle was exciting enough that not only the other customers, but the staff as well were applauding at the end. But the whole time, Itaro kept eating by himself. Since this wasn't even a conversation, let alone a date, she sent Itaro home alone. Part of her wanted to demand Itaro explain himself right now, but she decided to talk to Yuki instead. She tried her best to avoid Yuki so far in order to keep her identity a secret, but it was July now. She'd be gone from this era very soon. This might be her last chance to talk to Yuki at all. <sighs> Yuki sighed a little after Itaro left. Yuki 